Our final panelist will be Shahid Batar. Shahid Batar is a civil rights lawyer as well as a hip hop artist, and that works for me. He is also an independent columnist, nonprofit profit leader, grassroots community, community organizer, a singer, and a poet. He leads the Bill of Rights Defense Committee as executive director and has founded several grassroots groups across the country since graduating in 2003 from Stanford Law School. Shahid serves on the board of directors of the National Coalition to protect civil freedom. So I'm going to do a couple things here. Um, my job in some respects is to broaden the discussion. Um, so I'm with the Bill of Rights Defense Committee. My name is Shahid Buttar. I'm from DC and I'm excited to see this many people coming together in Detroit uh, concerned about these issues. Um, so I'm going to push back on a couple things we've heard about. I think we're all on the same page with respect to the FBI, right? We've been talking about the tail of an elephant. And there is an elephant, right? And so my job in some respects is to try to connect dots among a few different pieces that we've heard about, a few different pieces we haven't talked about. I'm going to ask you all, can you wave at me with a five minute warning? Because I want to pivot and go into a workshop phase. Because the other thing I want to do leaving out of here is give you all in the room some next steps, right? Particular things that you can do in Detroit to fix these problems. Analysis and description of the issues is not enough. And I'm going to start with something Brother Abayomi said. I'm going to pivot back through some uh, of what Dawood mentioned and some of Steve's comments. I'm going to leave with a rhyme uh, that I want to teach you guys first because you can use this later. Um, and then we'll, we'll get into it. Okay, so follow after me. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people are the ones the Bureau's been abusing. We the people are the ones the Bureau's been abusing. I right, put them together, right? It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people are the ones the Bureau's been abusing. What, who is the Bureau abusing? We the people, right. Okay, now I want to distinguish we the people from Muslims. Because it's like this. The FBI is not oppressing just us. And, and the reason that's significant is that if we organize amongst ourselves and we focus on the tail, we resign the opportunity to do precisely what Brother Abayomi said, which is to build the broad-based alliance necessary to fix these issues. You know, with all due respect to the reporters who've broken the stories recently, with all due respect to the members of Congress who uh, you know, evaluate pieces of legislation, neither reporters nor elected representatives are going to fix this problem. There's only one set of three words that can fix the problem, and it's the people the Bureau's been abusing, it is we the people, right? So let's connect some of these dots. All right, we talked about, Abayomi in particular, talked about COINTELPRO and the history of the Bureau's assault on free speech. It wasn't just the nation, it was also the movement to end the war in Vietnam. It was the Puerto Rican independence movement. It was the Native American movement. Right. It was women's rights activists, yeah. and it was environmentalists. Yeah. It is everybody, quite frankly. If you care about free speech and you care about liberty, you should care about the FBI. And it's important for us as a group here convening today to talk about a particular set of issues to highlight the ways in which people who are not in the room are impacted. That is critical, right? We've all heard the same issues with respect to the Bureau infiltrating mosques. I sued the Bureau in 2008 to try to find out the legal standard under which that happens. I've written letters to Congress since, signed by many of the organizations in this room. One just went in this week, and we haven't talked at all yet about the proposed extension of the FBI director's term. Brother Dawood mentioned that a lot of these problems have grown worse under the Obama administration. The Obama administration has also done something that the Bush administration uh, never got a chance to do, which is to propose the first extension of an FBI director's term since J. Edgar Hoover. And that's about to happen in Congress, and I bet that you've never heard anything about it. Okay, and that's a problem. And the biggest part of the problem, I want to do this in the abstract, then I'm going to get specific. The biggest part of the problem is we as activists taking our cues from the institutions that are oppressing us, right? This is not about informants, y'all. This is about accountability, transparency, and the Bill of Rights. And there is an institution, a particular one, right, that is abusing many a different of those rights. And so when the director then, and the term is set to expire, why would we back a president who proposes to extend and entrench that leadership, right? And better yet, why would we as activists resign the opportunity to use that as an opportunity to go on the offense? We have got to get off the defense. Yeah. 
which means we have to start thinking beyond discrete abuses and we have to start thinking about solutions. And so let me start digging through that. Um, Brother Daoud threw one out that was great, the idea of reforms on the use of informants. Okay? Uh, there happens to be a coalition here in Detroit that is organizing around similar principles and I want to proliferate your targets here. So the Bureau is one. If the FBI is a target, you have got to move on the director's term extension. It is the available opportunity for accountability. We can talk all we want about the Bureau, but action is where it's at. If you care about that issue, there's a petition online you can sign at BORDC.org. That's Bill of Rights Defense Committee, BORDC.org. Let me throw a second uh, just search term to write down in your notebooks, COINTELPRO 2.0 video released just this week, it will connect some of these dots between COINTELPRO in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and the contemporary abuses under the Mukasey and the Ashcroft uh, Attorney General's guidelines and the Holder Diog revisions that just got announced this, this summer. Um, beyond the opportunity of going after the Bureau in the accountability moments that naturally present themselves, like the extension of the term, there are others that come up. Twice now, under President Obama, the Patriot Act has come up before, re before Congress for reauthorization. Each of those were moments to be raising these concerns, right? And it's important to raise these concerns, but it's more important to link them to the debate of the moment. When Patriot comes up, get in the street, y'all. Where was the mobilization, right? We mobilized 340 congressional districts. We took people to the Hill. There was an echo chamber when Patriot came up the first time, and we as a movement have basically dropped the ball, even as particular organizations are trying to keep that flag raised. Keep your eye on the ball. It's not just informants, it's the entire domestic surveillance apparatus. And any opportunity to go after it is one that we as a movement should be picking up. And again, the one of the moment is the proposed extension of the FBI director's term. I want to be frank with you. His term will be extended regardless of what we do. There is not a chance in hell of us stopping it. That is absolutely no reason not to fight the struggle. The reason we are in this position is that for two generations, the progressive left has stopped fighting fights unless they can win them, right? A fight that you can win is not the one you fight. The ones worth fighting are the ones that you will lose to build political space for the things that you can't currently win but might if you shift the landscape, right? This is all about defense versus offense, right? And we can learn a lot from the right wing because they do this very effectively, right? They put in place and put in play all kinds of crazy, hair-brained, but visionary and principled, however bad and insane the principles are, they are consistent ideas, right? People gravitate toward principles. They don't gravitate toward incremental, mealy-mouthed, wishy-washy compromises, right? And so we have to organize around principles. What's the principle? The right to belief, the right to associate, the right to be brown and Muslim. These are rights that we already have. They are in the Bill of Rights. They're constitutional commitments we should be making the case that to simply respect our country's existing commitments, we have to adopt these very aggressive reforms to unwind the last 10 years. And let's talk about what those are. Um, we talked for a second about the FBI as a target. We talked for a second about the director as a target, just to map what those things relate to. One is changing the law. The way, for instance, that when the Patriot Act for up, was up for reauthorization, there's a competing piece of legislation I'll just put out there for your reference, the Justice Act the judicious use of surveillance tools and counterterrorism efforts. Do folks remember Senator Feingold from Wisconsin, whose seat in Senate was bought by a plastics magnate for $4 million? Before, he was, before his seat was bought in the Senate, the last thing he did was write a piece of legislation to fix the Patriot Act and unwind the domestic surveillance state. When's the last time you heard about it? Big problem, yeah. right? Go on the offense, push the tool. Congressman Conyers has a particular interest in this community. A lot of you are, are constituents of his. He is the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Raise your voice to your congressman and in... He's the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, right. No, but the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee should be introducing bills like this, right? Why hasn't it happened? I don't know. Y'all don't know, but go find out. Ask him, right? Why haven't you introduced the Justice Act? If you want talking points, backup resources, Contact me, look us up at BORDC.org. We, we have an entire team standing by waiting for you. More importantly than anything you do with respect to Washington, D.C., is what you do in Detroit. The number of hours of sincere, principled activist energy that is wasted going after federal targets astounds me. 
for two reasons. The first is that you can barely get to members of Congress. If you're, you know, they're, they're insulated by layers of staff. It takes money. It takes time. And even if you get one, there are 530 others you have to get to move in order to make anything happen. And even then you have problems with White Houses asserting executive authority to s summarily disregard acts of Congress. You have a Supreme Court dominated by executive branch veterans. I mean, the government is straight up dysfunctional. That's only true in Washington. You might have your problems here in Michigan, but the point is you can make change happen here. You can get to your city council. You can get to your mayor's office. And the FBI is not the only institution doing this stuff. In 20 different states, state and local police have been caught infiltrating activist groups. Go after the institutions that are within your reach at the same time that you're raising a flag on the visionary ones that you can't now connect with. Right? If the Bureau is run amok, by all means, raise the flag on the Justice Act. By all means, say that Congress shouldn't extend the term of the FBI director. But by more important than that, is to reach out to your friends and neighbors and go to the city council and say, let's put some reforms in place to make sure that the Detroit PD isn't doing all this stuff. All right? Just to talk a little bit about the other things that the FBI are doing, and then I'm going to segue into the workshop role. The FBI is also participating in immigration enforcement. 400,000 undocumented Americans were deported last year, often without ever seeing a judge on an underlying criminal offense. The tagline for the program, the Secure Communities Initiative, is breaking up families over broken taillights. The FBI has a role in it. Talk about it, right? It's not just informants. They're going after Latinos too. Make sure the Latino community knows it. That's a huge zone of potential political opportunity to put the dots together. This, this stuff just came out actually last week. There was a news release by it, a number of organizations that had sued the government under the Freedom of Information Act and recovered documents showing that the, what we knew before last week was that where cities and counties had said, we don't want our police turning over to ICE arrest data because we want to protect the civil rights of our residents, we know that in those places the FBI had stepped in as a go-between and said, don't sweat it, ICE, we'll get the information and we'll give it to you on the sly. What we found out last week is that the FBI, in fact, engineered the program and that they lied to Congress and the public in helping push it onto localities without disclosing that there was not an opportunity to opt out, it gets worse or better depending how you look at it. The FBI has a plan called the Next Generation Initiative, the NGI. You ever heard about it? Okay, this is offense, defense. Don't just fight yesterday's fight, fight tomorrow's. Tomorrow's fight is biometrics because the FBI is using the Secure Communities Initiative as part of a documented political strategy to force biometric data collection on all Americans. They're basically using immigrants as bait to get Americans to resign their rights and create a national ID system that you don't even need cards for because you can track people's bodies. That's tomorrow's fight. And let me highlight something about that. What's the political group that is most concerned about biometrics? Is it Muslims? Is it Latinos? You nailed it. It's the right wing. We have got to connect with the other communities that share concerns about the other pieces of the elephant. If we keep talking about the tail and talking to each other, we might as well go home. Talk about the trunk, talk about the legs, talk yep. about the tusks, and reach out to the communities that care about those things. And so let's segue into that. Okay, we got about two, three minutes left, right? Can, does somebody have a piece of paper that they can take notes if I get like a brainstorm happening? Just anybody, raise your hand. Good, right there, okay. And then when we're done, do you mind sharing your notes with Charmaine? Okay. I want to hear about, just yell out into the air, okay? What are the Latino organizations in Detroit? La Sed. You, you. you getting that? La Sed? La Sed, Latino Family Services. Latino Family Services. Latino United. Keep it going. Just yell it out. You all have seen flyers in your coffee shop. You know about groups that are hosting teach-ins. What are the groups you hear about? Nice. Any others? Okay, did you catch that, sister? Okay, thank you. Uh, what are the organizations here in town, what are the right-wing organizations that might care about biometrics? Where are the Ron Paulies at? How do you find them? There's the Campaign for Liberty in D.C. Okay, there you go. That's actually a really smart suggestion. The next time you see a right-wing nut job, quoted in the paper, write their name down and go find them because they're going to care about biometrics and if you approach them about the part of the elephant that they care about, you might actually pick up, pick up an ally and go into Conyers' office to say, let's do something about the FBI, right? That's how you build power, right? To build power, you've got to go broad. 
And the fact that the FBI and the federal agencies are committing such grave abuses creates opportunities for us as activists if we think creatively about the ways to leverage that overreach to expand our coalitions and push back. So we talked about Latino groups. Honestly, anybody have ideas on right-wing groups in the city? You've seen them out there marching. The people who hate you, what do, what do they call themselves? The Tea Party, okay, there's the Tea Party. Orders of the Dragons. Nice, okay, okay. I heard Dawood just call out Orders of the Dragon. Order of the Dragon, that's apparently a right-wing group here. Others? Knights of Columbus? And you repeat this thought experiment, right? I mean, it, it, ideally, this is something we take half an hour to do and then assign tasks and outreach roles so that someone's following up with each of these groups. I would encourage you to do that. We'll take the groups, circulate the list, sign up for outreach to the different groups. Go talk to them. Talk about the parts of the elephant. Reconvene with the rest of your allies. Brainstorm another list. Rinse and repeat. And if you do that for six months, you'll have a coalition that can take the Detroit police down in front of the city council, that can challenge the FBI in, Congress, in Conyers' office the next time something comes up. They can get an act like the Justice Act introduced. They can get a vote opposing the extension of the FBI director's term. But to build that power, you've got to engage your allies. So uh, just a closing riff, we're going to go back to that rhyme in a second, but before we get there, I'm just going to again invite everybody to go to your coffee shop, look at the posters, take the contact information of them, if they're a Latino group, a Muslim group, a South Asian group, an Arab group, if they're a peace activist association, if they're an interfaith organization, if they're a right-wing libertarian group that you think might care about the government watching them, take the contact information and reach out, at the very least, Feed it to, is there, is there, Charmaine, are you a person who could take emails from people just collecting suggestions? Send those contacts to Charmaine. It's as simple as pooling your resources and individually taking on discrete tactical assignments to expand what the collective whole can represent. Right? It really is not rocket science. It's how we got the weekend. It's how we got the Bill of Rights in the first place. It's how we got women's right to vote. I mean, rights are won. This is not new information. It's been lost to some extent, right? This is, a, this is a set of cultural learning that as a civilization we have essentially resigned. But the tools are out there, right? It is well established, the method is, 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 is available, and I will just say again, we at the Bill of Rights Defense Committee are much more than merely willing to work with you and actively back you up. Uh, let's go back to the rhyme just so we can close on a high note, okay? Y'all remember it, right? Let's do it slow and then we'll pick it up. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people are the ones the bureaus been abusing. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people are the ones the bureaus been abusing. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people are the ones the bureaus been abusing. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people are... One more time, but I want to hear y'all say it. It's the FBI versus the Constitution. We the people... Bureau's been abusing. It's the FBI versus the... We the people are the ones the Bureau's been abusing. Thank you for coming out this Saturday afternoon.